Today I'd like to speak with you about strengthening your head voice, also known as the falsetto in male voices. How do you know if you need to strengthen your head voice? Well, there are three clear indicators. The first indicator is a loss or a loss of ease in your high notes. Second, loss of flexibility. And the third can be a lack of stamina while you're singing. As opera singers, we spend a large part of our training cultivating our head voice. So then what happens that we might need to revisit that later on in our careers? Well, three things are usually to blame. First is singing too heavy for too long. I'm not just talking about repertoire, I'm also talking about vocalism. If we're adding in too much chest voice and bringing it too high, that can very slowly deteriorate the strength of our head voice over time. The second contributing factor to losing the head voice is actually singing while we're vocally fatigued. While a lot of singers go from engagement to engagement without giving time for the voice to rest, we're constantly learning new repertoire, the voice can become tired. And then, because we are trained and skilled artists, we want to make sound, so instead of having nothing come out, we actually start to use inappropriate musculature. The third cause for a loss of head voice can be root of tongue tension, and that comes in very slowly over time, or you may have had that at the outset of your training. So what can be done to regain our head voice? The first exercise is actually the coperto exercise. And first I like to start with octaves and then move to two octaves as I get more advanced. So the first one, you may want to begin somewhere in your lower passaggio. Today I'm going to begin on E flat here. So we're going to do... And you want to make sure that the root of your tongue is up and that you're not putting pressure when you go to the top. So a wrong way to do this would be that's wrong. You can take this up fairly high. Then I like to start with two octaves. I'll begin somewhere down where I'm comfortable. Today I'm gonna to begin on A. take that up pretty high. So you'll notice we're dealing with three different registers at that point. We've got our chest register going into our whistle, coming back into an integrated head voice. Very good to start with. The next exercise I like to do is actually beginning pre passaggio and using a lip tongue trill. So we're going to start Five, four, three, two, one. Now, one of the things you want to check for in this exercise is that you're not getting too heavy or singing too loud. So you don't want to sound that's too much chest voice in the sound. And you can take that up, I would say through the passaggio, not much higher. gradual lightening. It's very important to separate the action of the larynx from the action of the tongue and the lips. So you want to think those are separate. The next exercise I like to do is a light staccati. Again, beginning pre passaggio and only going through the passaggio. And this is so that we can regulate how much head voice we're using as we go through the passaggio. For those of you who are really struggling and maybe we're singing too heavy for too long, you may want to add even more head voice than you think is appropriate in this area. And so again, I'd like you to think of head voice and chest voice as two different ingredients. And depending on where your imbalance is, you may need a little bit more of head voice. So I'm gonna start on E vowel. It helps to bring the chords together a little bit more. And we're gonna do five, 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 four, three, two, one. So we're gonna do. Paying a lot of attention 
the cords are gently closing. They're not slamming together, okay? But there's a still a very thin head voice sound. So we're gonna maybe get a sense of flutiness in the back of the head. It's very important that you are singing the staccati more in a tenuto fashion so that the chords are actually approximating a little bit better. Once you've done these exercises, I like to check my progress with a grand scale. And this way I can see how the head voice has been integrating. Now you may want to do these exercises a lot longer than I just demonstrated before you venture onto the grand scale. Now it's very important that when we do the grand scale, we're going to check and make sure that the root of the tongue is not pushing down as we ascend. See? Going to take that up by half steps. So what I like to make sure is that my tongue doesn't push down on the ascension. If it is pushing down, you may want to return to the staccati exercise and double check it there. Working on the head voice is not the same as bringing the larynx high. In fact, quite the opposite. We want to keep the lowness of the larynx but reduce the pressure on the larynx. We want to make sure our tongue root is high and not pushing down. And we want to make sure that that cord closure is really thorough. So this is going to take some practice, but really try when you're doing these exercises not to lighten by raising the larynx because that is a very common problem. Thank you for joining me here, and I look forward to seeing you next week for my video on tongue tension. If you like this video, please subscribe below. Thank you.